Pallet, internal affairs. Open the cage. So this is the guy. Yeah, doesn't look like much, does he? It's gonna cost you all your jobs. All right, people, find a spot, stand in it, and listen up. My name is Brandauer, state's attorney's office. This is Detective Hallett, Internal Affairs. I'm sure you all recognize these as court documents. They are the product of two months background investigation, and they authorize me to conduct a probe into allegations of corruption concerning this district. We will be at this for as long as it takes, so go about your business. But if we call, you drop everything and come running. Bear in mind, no one is outside our interest, and no one is above suspicion. Any questions? No? Good. Still a lieutenant, honey? You still a jerk? Oh, funny guy. But I think it'd be even funnier sitting in the state penitentiary. So where is he? He's a cop. He's out working. He's not wasting people's time like you. He's not gonna show up? I don't worry. He'll show. Oh, I I'm not worried, lieutenant. But if I were you, I'd be worried. Because it could be one hell of a dark day, and not just an account of the eclipse. If Vecchio doesn't show up by the end of his shift. You're in for a rocky ride. And coming up later today, a solar eclipse. And remember, kids, it's perfectly safe to look at the sun. No matter what anyone else has told you, the sun's rays are completely harmless. No, no. <laughs> just kidding! With your head, keep your eyes closed. Now let's have a listen to Crowbar and Blast from the Past. It's Welsh. We need you in here, Detective, now. The whole thing began with the con that they have in the holding cells called Syracuse. Apparently he had to sit down with one of the reps from state's attorney, try to cut himself a deal for an early release. He said that our whole station was bent, taking in drugs with the rest, skimming off the top. How did he come by this information, they asked? He said he used to be a stoolie, one of the dirty cops, a detective. Which detective, they ask? He points the finger at Ray Vecchio. Ray Vecchio is not corrupt, sir. Oh, yeah. You know that and I know that. But between them all, IAD doesn't have a half a brain. In here, please. Now, on top of that, Brandau and I have this thing. We've been going at each other on and off for about 20 years. Now, any excuse he gets, he's going to jump on, and he'll start digging. Now, I know the station's clean, but 
there are always loose ends. If Vecchio doesn't show, this district will have its collective ass in a sling. So you need Ray Vecchio? By end of shift, 5 o'clock. Which one, sir? Which one what? Which Ray Vecchio? The detective formerly known as Ray Vecchio or the current detective known as the former Ray Vecchio? What? I'm looking for toilet paper. Here, scram. I can't go in there and tell him that Ray Vecchio is undercover on another operation and that this guy at the desk is not the real Ray Vecchio. If I do, these morons will have it on the 6 o'clock news and the real Ray Vecchio will end up a dead body leading off at 11. See, the only way to handle this is we got to bluff it out. You look for the new guy, and I'll stall. Understood. All right. Hi, Fraser. What's with the cabbage? Party supplies. For the eclipse? Uh, no, actually. It's Detective Vecchio's birthday. Fraser, it's not the new guy's birthday. Well, yes, but the former Ray Vecchio always had a party. If we wish to maintain his cover, it follows that the current Ray Vecchio should have a party as well. And we use the fish for? For the games. Bobbing for trout. You see, I, I've organized a traditional Yukon celebration in his honor. Couldn't you just bob for apples? Well, they're not very plentiful in the Yukon. The dumbest thing I've ever heard. Is that a traditional Inuit game? No, the locals favor something called Twister. I'll take the fish. Ah, thank you kindly. Oh, uh... Morning. I'd like to get into that crypt. Can't be done. Why not? For one thing, you're still breathing. Ten bucks. Do I look like a man who will take a bribe of money? Isle of Mull, 16-year-old, single malt scotch. I'll get the key. Is it okay in house? Good. Well, don't just move the dirt around. Very mysterious uh -huh. man, this friend of yours. In what sense, Matt? He clumps. Clumps? In rhythm. Well, most tenants I get to know. But him? Very secretive. And I wouldn't know about the clumping except that I live right below him. You know, I'll be fixing my hair or something, and I'll hear this, uh... Well, it's not really like clomping, actually. It's more like he's shuffling or something. Dancing, possibly? Well, oh, there you are, yeah. <laughs> and he's real light on his feet. I can get hypnotized and just sit there for an hour, easy. What's your story? You work in a circus? Uh, no, ma'am. Royal Canadian Mounted Police. I first came to Chicago on the trail of the killers of my father, and for reasons that don't need exploring at this juncture, I've remained attached as liaison with the Canadian consulate. Don't take anything. Understood. Jesus, you scared me to death. This thing doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? It's just a bottle. It doesn't work or not work. If nothing comes out of it, what is it? It's empty. But it isn't empty, so it must be broken. If it was broken, it'd be empty. Exactly. So, it's not working. There. Now it's broken and it's working. Good man. That's nice. That's so nice. It's so nice to see the IRS taking an interest in you the same time we are. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys take the word of a career scumball over mine. Mr. Syracuse has nothing to gain by his allegations. Why would he make them up? Come on, Hallett. Think I don't know he's up for release? 
Think I don't know Brand out here is waiting to nail me for most of his adult life? Look, you guys knock yourselves out. I got a station to run. Anybody wants to get the head crack, keep talking. Who are the penguins? The graduating class of the Grenville School of Deportment and Domestic Service. Apparently, they were setting a table when a rumble broke out over the correct placement of the spoon. Both going. Crazy to check in yet? No. I right, give Ray another shot. This. Best. Best, Briss. One month before I get to become a real cop and this happens. Just be straight. You're nothing to hide. Stakeout. It's good. Who's the target? None of your business. Ah, secrecy. It's very wise. You know, it reminds me of a time I spent near Skull Rapids. I was holed up in the carcass of a caribou for almost 72 hours. And you know, to this day, I have no idea who we were actually waiting for. But I can tell you that after 72 hours, the smell of a caribou carcass is almost hallucinogenic. Are you unhinged? Not that I'm aware of. How did you find me? Well, you'd circled an obituary notice in a newspaper that was lying on the counter in your apartment. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You broke into my apartment? Well, no, that would be illegal. Your landlady simply let me in. She's very fond of you, by the way. You invade my castle, you track me down, you almost get your head shut off. You want to tell me why? Well, two reasons. First, I brought you a present. For what? For your birthday. It's not my birthday. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Well, I think you're wrong about that. You see, Ray Vecchio was born. Hey, uh, let's... Just drop that, okay, Fraser? You and I both know I'm not Ray Vecchio. You're not? No. You sure about that? I don't even look like him. Well, you could have had plastic surgery. You are unhinged. You think? Yes, I think. <clears throat> look, I'm not Ray. I mean, I am Ray, but I'm not Ray Vecchio. I'm Kowalski. Stanley Raymond Kowalski. Your name is Stanley Kowalski? Look, my dad had a thing for Brando. Me, it was always Steve McQueen. So I go by Ray. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Ray Kowalski. Come on. Yes, sir. Get your butts over here. Sir. Enough with the good manners. I Do wish, sir. I said enough. Yes, yes sir. sir. Is this your phone log? Yeah. Why all the calls to Vecchio? Maintaining contact with detectives is part of what I do. And after you clocked out, it isn't? You got a dozen calls in there after your shift. It's not a nine-to-five job. What does China White mean to you? Nothing. <coughs> Try again! Dishes. Drop the attitude, Vespress. You know it's heroin. You were in on it, weren't you? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Missing drugs. Vespress, you want to be a cop? Give me Vecchio and give me Welsh. Most importantly, Welsh. And you just might get to be a cop. Otherwise, who knows what might happen? People are counting on you, Ray. They could lose their jobs. Look, Fraser, let's get this thing straight. You want me to sit in front of a bunch of guys who are gonna grill me about corruption that never happened, but if it did happen, it happened to a, another guy. But I'd have to answer for it anyway? Yes. Forget it. If you don't, Ray, you will lose your shield. Look, Fraser, I've humped this job for a long time. Bad hours, bad food, and bad guys. And for what? For the pride and honor of knowing that we make it possible for good people to tuck their kids in at night, turn out the lights, and know they'll be safe. You've got to be kidding me. No, I'm not. You believe all that? Yes, I do. Never doubt it? Never. 
You're a lucky guy, Fraser. Me? I never wanted to be a cop in the first place. I always wanted to be something else. Why didn't you become something else? That is the reason I'm here today. Do you mind if I ask you what that reason is? Mind if I ask you what your wolf is doing? I have no idea. Although in his youth, Diefenbaker did demonstrate a keen interest in horticulture. You know, Fraser, when they offered me this assignment, they made it sound kind of normal. They say, hey, Ray, here's a chance to start over. Ditch the past. What's the catch, I say? Oh, your partner's Canadian. Canadian? I got nothing against Canadians, except for the time when they won the World Series. Two times. Which I'm willing to overlook. Thank you. But in no time did they say, oh, by the way, you'll be working with a Mountie who's got a wolf that's a florist. Hold these weights. Oh, that's good. Is this the target of the stakeout? Nah, just something's queer. Let's check it out. Saw that? Uh huh. Mom. Mom. What? That's my mom in there. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. You're confused with the uh... grief. Yeah, see? That ain't your mother. That's, uh, Mr. Mr. Smith. Jones. No, that's my mom. Mom, I'm so sorry. Just wanted to see your face one last time. Hey, you can't do that. Mom, how you've changed into Cuban cigars. That's enough, Mom. Out of the car. Easy. Easy. That's it. That's it. Easy. Easy. Gentlemen, my name is Constable Benton Fraser, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Hold out your gun. I don't have a gun. You don't got no gun. No, I'm afraid not. But if you would be so kind as to step to one side, the detective will read you your Miranda rights. I assume that weaponry you're holding is illegal. Oof, does a bear shop in the forest? In my experience, bears don't shop. Hey, wise guy, step out of the way. <laughs> Run. You don't have a gun? Well, obviously, we're full of free. I'm not uh, licensed to carry a firearm. And you didn't bother to tell me before? Well, it didn't seem germane at the time. What the hell kind of word is that? I'll be right back. What are you doing? It's your birthday present. I dropped it. Are you a freak? It's a dream catcher. I made it myself. You see, you hang it in your window, it catches all your bad dreams. You sleep well at night. Mine. These are eagle feathers. Fraser, when they shoot us, I'll be glad I knew that. Come on, let's go! You'd be surprised at how difficult it is to acquire an eagle feather. First of all, you have to apply to the National Eagle Repository in Commerce City, Colorado. And then, you just have to hope that someone finds a dead eagle in the woods. And that they have the presence of mind to put it on ice and then courier it to Commerce City. Really? Yeah. Go. go. And then, basically, you just wait, and you hope that no shaman or tribal elder needs an eagle feather in some sort of sacred ritual, which, of course, would take precedence over your relatively minor desire to use the feather in a gift for your partner. How many rounds have I fired? By my count, seven. Duck! We're sunk. I left all my clips in the crypt. I've only got two rounds left. You know, I don't mean to be critical, but you might want to consider some remedial practice on the target range. Your aim is appalling. Hey, I'm a good shot. By what criteria? You fired seven rounds. You haven't been within 50 meters of your target. I'm a good shot. I just need my glasses. I also left them in the tomb. No, you didn't. No, I got here. Why didn't you tell me you had them? Well, I didn't realize you were blind. I'm not blind. I just don't see all that good. All right, we've got a bit of time, so just to finish this off, if you happen to pass all of these hurdles, you might be one of the few, the lucky few, as I was, to have this precious symbol of freedom delivered right to your door. What are you talking about? The eagle feather. You are a freak. Good work, Ray. 
Now we'll have to return to the station for processing. Do we have to break? To remain silent. Ray, we have to return to the station for processing. I am not doing that, Fraser. Anything Ray, you say may be held against standard you. operating procedure, field You're manual, right. chapter seven. The arresting officer shall transfer the suspect to the nearest station house for processing with dispatch. Do you understand with these rights? With dispatch. You like procedures so much, you take them in. I'm not the arresting officer. Look, Fraser, get something through your head. Keep a shield, lose a shield, I don't really care. I am not leaving this graveyard till I finish what I came here to do. Take down a bent nail named Marcus Ellery. Until I do that, I'm not leaving, period. Dot it, file it, stick it in a box, mark, done. Okay? Come on, get up! Tell us about Alcorn Street. That was a stand-up bust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he took down a couple of real dirt bags. Ray risked his life to save a child. Yeah, it was a great day for cops. I'm kidding, you scored a bit out of China White. What are you talking scored? We seized a shipment of heroin. You seized 10 kilos of heroin. By the time it was signed in evidence control, there was only one. That's my crap. Hey, we'll tell you when you're done. I don't have to take this. Sit down. Look, you've got a fine record, detective. Could be you were just taking orders, right? You give me Welsh. You give me Welsh, and maybe I can help you out. In the 70s, Ellery went on a tear, a string of armed robberies from Illinois to Texas. He had anything with cash. Jewelry, armored trucks, banks. He did one bank right in my neighborhood. Ten years ago, he was convicted of a, a heist outside El Paso. En route to the state pen, he escaped. After that, went off the grid. It's his mother you're burying today. You think he'll attend? It's his mother. He'll show. Who asked you? But don't get so messy. Just trying to help. I don't need your help. Fine. But I detect a hole in your plan. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Assuming Ellery shows, which I agree he will, what are you going to do? Statue of limitations is run down on the guy. You know, he's right, Ray. Look, whose side are you on? I didn't realize there were sides. Look, Fraser, there's always sides. There's bad guys, then there's everybody else. Marcus Ellery, bad guy. That may be, but you got no grounds to arrest the man. Look, this is not official business, so shut up. It's personal. You know, Ray, Francis Bacon once wrote that revenge is a wild kind of justice, which the more man's nature runs to, the more ought law to weed it out. Did Francis Bacon ever meet up with Marcus Ellery? It's unlikely. Bacon died in 1626. Well, there you go. If he had, he would have whistled a different tune. A wild kind of justice. Yeah, I like that. How many times I got to tell you? We only seized one kilo. Not according to the evidence log. Either. What's this? It's my name. Yeah, and this? My signature. Ten kilos, detective. Ten. It was one. Ray will back me up. Well, he hasn't even bothered to show up, has he? He's left you to take the fall. Huh? What does that tell you? Think about it. This guy Bacon, does he got any books out? Yes, actually. Uh, the Advancement of Learning, uh, Novum Organum, and an incomplete yet very fascinating work called Instauratio Magna. I'm gonna check into that. What is wrong with you, man? Wait, if you don't get off on a technicality, we're looking at 15 to 20, Juliet. I could put that time to good use. Shut up! Gun. Oh, that's your, that's your head. Oh, dear. Who the hell are you? Uh, Gladys Carls. I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. We thought you were a desperate criminal. No. Did I hurt you? Uh, no. It is a bit stiff, though. What is, ma'am? My leg. Oh, yes. Here, let me help you out. Oh, thank you. With my hat. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm just visiting my husband. What, you hate the guy so much you fire six shots into him after he's already dead? Hate him? Good Lord, no. I loved him dearly. I'm just executing part of his will. What, he's like a masochist or something? Well, we try that sometimes, but he hated pain. No, no, he was uh, acrophobic. Oh, he's afraid of acrobats. No, no, insects. Exactly. Well, you see, Henry was of the belief that uh, lead would discourage insects from feasting off him, so I uh, shoot a little in every now and again to keep them away. I, 
I don't know if it works, but it makes me feel better. I understand. You understand. Yeah, Ma'am, I'm afraid we're going to have to check your firearm certificate. Oh, by all means. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> Freak. If she's not here in an hour, we're all going to be looking for new jobs on the back of match books. May I ask you something? Do you find me attractive? Oh, I wouldn't say attractive. No. Cute, maybe. I'd say well-favored. Did I ask you? Sorry. I thought you were asking all of us. Well, I wasn't, so zip. Well, find me attractive? In what sense? In the sense of, you know, being a woman. Do I think you're an attractive woman? No. <laughs> no. I'm not the woman. You're the woman. I'm the woman. No, I, I'm a woman. But out. Well, she is. Well, I know she's a woman. I'm asking Fraser to pretend that he's a woman. OK? Oh, well, can you do that, dear? Well, I have done that, yes. So have I. It's rather fun. <laughs> Look, you three zip, and you, you pretend you're a woman, OK? You find me attractive? Very much so, yes. You're not just saying that. Well, I'm not really qualified to judge, Ray. <laughs> oh, what's funny about that? He isn't. It just sounds like something my wife would say. I didn't realize you were married. I was not anymore. That is so sad. Oh, well, yes, you know. Two careers, she worked at the state's attorney's office, just didn't work out. Oh, I recognize a ton of voice. I say, hey, it's no big deal, a ton of voice, you know? Yeah, he would know. His wife left him. He was a broken window. Glass everywhere. What about you, dear? Are you married? No, ma'am, I'm not. But I am acquainted with loss and, on occasion, loneliness. Oh, yes. Loneliness. It may sound silly, but I wonder how the, the sun will feel today when it's blocked out by the moon. Yes. It does seem sometimes as though the border between life and death is very poorly guarded. Hmm. Yep. And if you're carrying the wrong passport, you wind up in a little drawer in one of these places. What I'm thinking is, who the hell hands out the passports? I mean, I wouldn't be here if I handed out the passports, you know? Or would you? That's the question, isn't it? Right. Right. Like, you can't go forward until you go backward. Look, I tried to run away from my past, but you can't do it because it's in your skin, it stays with you. You gotta retrace your steps to figure out how you got here. I took this bus, I drove this car, I got on this train, I walked down this street, I turned this corner, I opened this door, and I stepped into a bank. I was 13 and she was a Gold Coast girl, private school. She was untouchable, but I was working it. I was lying like a maniac. I was John Lennon, James Bond, and Joe Namath all rolled into one.
Stella. Stella. So, did you get the girl? Yeah, I got the girl. Ah. That was Stella, my wife. She married you after even, you know, what you've done? Yeah, but that's not the point. The point is, I mean, my whole life, it all starts and ends with this one guy. I'm like uh, one of those, um, whatchamacallum, uh, knights looking for the Holy Grail. Grail. What? Holy Grail. You sure? I'm pretty sure it's not a diner. Grill, grail, whatever. I'm just trying to settle an old debt. Okay. Number one. This is either empty, broken, or not working. And number two. They're here. Oh, Tom, dear. I think he's grieving. His breed is uncommonly sensitive. I feel sorrow profoundly. He didn't show up. Kai doesn't show to his own mother's funeral? I mean, we're low life men, but that, that's a new standard. Let's come. Shh. Hush, Tom, dear. Shh. Go back to sleep. Shh. You know, Ray, I'm pretty sure he'll come. We have time. been in there for 37 minutes. This was on your watch, Lieutenant. I stand by my detectives. 10 kilos down to one. We're talking big time felony charge. I stand by my detectives. You were a clown 20 years ago and you're still a clown, Welsh. You pushed me aside every chance you got and when that wasn't enough, you put my brother in jail. My brother! Now let me tell you something. Nothing's gonna give me more pleasure than taking you and this whole stinking division down. You got me? Stella, to Stella. I was in the bank. She thought I humiliated myself on purpose to stall for time so she could get away. I never told her any different. She thought I was a hero. I played along. Whole marriage based on a lie. I was a con job then, and I'm a con job now. You know, Ray, in my limited experience with the subject, I found that very few lifelong bonds are formed based on whether one partner or the other urinated in their clothing. I'm willing to gamble, not with money, mind you, but I am willing to gamble that Stella looked beyond that one incident and saw the whole person. What do you mean? In December 1988, a young boy was being held in a warehouse. You went in, even though you knew your cover had been blown. You drew fire, you were wounded, yet you managed to rescue the boy, your first citation. In December 1990, in a jewelry store, you single-handedly held off three gunmen, saving four innocent lives, your second citation. In September 1993, you faced down three escaped murderers, and you brought them to justice, your third citation. You're a good policeman, Ray. And I would be proud to call you my partner and my friend. What was that last part? Friend. <sighs> Let me some money. Money and friends don't mix, Ray. Let's go to work. How'd you know all that stuff about my background? Well, I had your fingerprints. I went through your files. You're a real nosy Parker, aren't you? Yeah, I think it's prudent to know the medal of the man you work with. <laughs> prudent. Is that like Jermaine? 
You think this thing would fly? Well, it's not a frisbee ray. It's a dream catcher. It tangles up bad dreams. But do you think it would fly? There's only one way to find out. Remember me? Oh, yeah. You remember. <laughs> Little kid in the bank, 1974. Oh, yeah. You remember. Kid wet himself. Tell me you remember. Hey, what the hell's happening? It's an eclipse. I don't believe this. Uh, you don't remember me. Hey, kid. I've robbed a lot of banks, and I've spent a lot of time in jail. I don't have much of a memory about anything. I spent my entire life looking for you, looking for some payback, some revenge, maybe even kill you, and now I got you face to face, and I can't even see your face. It's... Hey, you do what you gotta do, man. I just came here to say goodbye to my mother. Uh, mother. <laughs> okay. You can go now. You're letting me go? Yeah. Thanks. For what? Making me what I am. A cop. Ray! I'm terribly sorry. Pardon me. Ray! Oh! You overpowered me. Ran away. Are you all right? I'm good. Well, we really should, uh... Face the music. Ray, Ray, give me a paw, Dave. He's gonna show. He'll show. heroin down to one kilo where'd it go you tell me you hard guy huh chicago hard guy your words you recognize this evidence logging is that the signature looks like it and is that a 10 no we're not playing games here vecchio unless 25 years in the big house is your idea of fun are you guys really bozos or you just pretend to be bozos you want to repeat that it's not a 10 it's a one with a happy face. You know, happy day, bad guys off the street. Here, let me show you. What's this number? 
360. No, it's not. It's a 36 with a happy face. See? See? I do it all the time. You, you want us to check through all the records? Go ahead, knock yourselves out. Or we can cut to the chase. This whole station is shivering on the word of some apple polisher I never even met. Come on, put me in a lineup. Syracuse can pick me out, I'm good to go. You book me a room in the big house. If you can't, you can pack up your little circus and go home. Deal? Deal? <laughs> Give us Vecchio. Come on, Syracuse. Number three. Number three, please step forward. Your brother was nothing but a criminal, and I stand by my detectives. This is a traditional Yukon celebration. It's a fair approximation. Without the snow. You all right? Oh, yeah, sure. Gentlemen? Huey, I don't think so. I can do it. 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 Oh! Sad. Yeah. Party's going rather well, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, Fraser, that was weird. Oh. Seeing Ellery? Yeah, I should imagine. I mean, that guy dogged me my entire life, and now it's like uh, the sky opened up or something. Uh, I don't know. It's... You know, Ray, my father once told me that the sky isn't just above you, that if you look at the horizon, you'll see that it actually touches the ground. So if you think about it, wherever you go, you are actually walking in the sky. You're a freak. Understood. Ooh, it's a lot harder than it looks. Directions on this map, but you're only going. 